Then they are saying that uh, another question is about reproduction, and that is the female, that is the male. You have A, which is uh, vas deferens, B, which is epididymis, and C, which is testis. Identify A, we have seen it, which is vas deferens. Uh, they are saying that state the function of B. What is B? What is B? That is the uh, epididymis, the function of the epididymis stores uh, sperms for maturation. Yes, yeah, stores sperm for maturation. And then they're saying during vasectomy, that is the cutting. Uh, when you talk about the vasectomy, is the cutting. Né? Yes, the cutting of the epi, uh, of the vas deferens. A is cut and tied as shown in the diagram. Semen will not be released during copulation. Explain the composition of semen after vasectomy. Yes, basically, semens will not contain um, semens will not contain sperms because now it has been blocked. Né? If you look at it here, the sperms are here. They have been blocked. It means that they can't go up. So basically, they won't contain sperms. Why? Because they won't be transported. And if they are not transported, it means that what will contain in the semen, it will be only the fluid coming from the accessory glands. And what are the accessory glands? Accessory glands are the prostate gland, uh, vas deferens, sorry, vas, um, prostate gland, corpus gland, and semino vesco. Those are the three accessory glands which are supposed to be there. Then they're saying that um, describe how, explain how this condition may affect fertility. How this will affect fertility. If, 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 uh, which, which situation now? Oh, okay. In some cases, male are born with the C located, part C located inside the body, which it will fail to descend into the scrotum. Mm -hmm. Where is C? Oh, the testes which produce the sperms. So how, explain how this will affect. Basically, it will affect because the temperature of the testes inside the body will be too much. And then if the temperatures are too much, the sperms will not be produced on the high, high quantities. Remember, for fertilization to take place, you need a high number of sperms. And then now, if it has produced less sperms, it means that the sperms may not be enough to carry out fertilization. And then now, what happens? Definitely, it means that um, fertilization, it, it, you have problems with the, with the fertilizing. Like you see people having, for example, uh, two, two couple. So they have uh they are looking for a baby for a long period of time, but the problem could be um if not the, the side of the lady, side of the men, one of the problem could be that the men produce less sperms uh so that they can travel. Remember to 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 swim from the uh the, the, the vagina to the fallopian tube where fertilization takes place, it's like swimming across Indian Ocean. You have to be with a lot. Imagine the people in, in this country, South Africa, for example, and then you put all of them to swim across Indian Ocean. Very few will survive to the end. And there will be so many uh, uh, um, obstacles during that course. You understand? So very few will swim across the what? The Indian Ocean. So it means that you have to be with a large number of sperms so that at least some can swim to the end and then they cut out fertilization. So if you have less number of sperms because uh, the testes are up and they, they can't provide favorable temperature for the sperm production, that's why they're hanging so that they can provide favorable temperature for sperm production, then it means that the sperms will be few in numbers. And then if they're few in numbers, they are most likely not to reach the fallopian tube to carry out fertilization. If they don't reach there, it means that the consequence will be less ability or less um, probability of the egg to be fertilized. That's the meaning. Describe the process of uh, spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, um, spermatogenesis, we have to explain the way how we are supposed to explain in the modern way uh, of our examination guideline. 
So it's not like the way we are explaining them in the previous books. So in our book, you can see exactly how you're supposed to explain it, but this is how you're supposed to explain it. When you talk about the process of spermatogenesis and eugenesis, it's almost the same. So you can say that under the influence of the testosterone, the diploid cell, which is to end, né? the diploid cell, which is to end, yes, will undergo what we call uh, meiosis. And this diploid cell is found in the seminiferous tube. So it will undergo my, 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 my meiosis to form the haploid sperm cells. Basically, you have one cell divided into two, then divided into four. These are the ones which form. Uh, so under the influence of testosterone, we give you a tick, you mentioning the word testosterone. The diploid cell, this diploid cell, which is to end, will undergo uh, mitosis, when it undergoes mitosis, it forms, uh, which is formed in the seminiferous tube, and then uh, it forms, uh, you saying the word my, 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 meiosis, it will undergo meiosis, it will also tick, so testosterone is a tick, meios, uh, meiosis is a tick, and then uh, where is it located in the seminiferous tube is another tick, so those are three ticks, um, and then uh, to form the uh, haploid, the word haploid, haploid one n yeah haploid sperm cells is also a tick basically that's what we want nothing else don't put too many words we don't want them that's what we want when you're marking that's what we are looking for go to our book download it and then try to use it and then you see if you want to get a distinction all right mm -hmm. they're saying that um describe how the development of the embryo is protected and nourished in the uh of the paras uh, organisms. How is the development of the embryo nourished and protected? So uh, they are saying that describe how the developing embryo uh, is protected and nourished under OV of OVV paras animals. So these are animals whereby you have um, OV, which means the ovum. And then VV means inside. So it means that the, the ovum is developing inside the mother's body. Yes, but it does not uh, obtain nutrients from the mother. It obtains nutrients from the ovum. That's why it's called ovoviviparous. So how is it uh, nourished and protected? Basically, you have two questions which you are supposed to answer. So you're supposed to look for a way forward for protection and you are supposed to look for a way forward for nourishment. So protection... You look at the amniotic egg, the way the layers, the, what you call the extra embryonic membranes. The first one is the um, the allantois. This one protects the embryo uh, by removing the waste, uh, the waste product. Allantois is basically for wasty product. You understand? And then you talk about the um, amniotic fluid, uh, which is very important for for shock absorber it it helps in the shock absorber then you can talk about the shell which is very important for covering and uh, uh, uh for protection Br brings about the protection these shells they have holes small 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 holes to allow the air to go through yes and then you can also talk about it is inside the mother's body that's why it's all is VV. Né? It's inside the mother's body. So it means that it won't be eaten by the predators. To eat that egg, you have to eat the mother. Yes. It's like a get. To reach the eggs, you have to eat the mother. And then you reach the eggs. So it is being protected by the mother. So you can talk about um, something like that for the for the baby. But you saying because it is yeah, VV, paras, you need to talk about is being protected by the mother first, at least. Yes. Then number two is, is nourished. How is it nourished? The embryo receives nutrients from where? It receives nutrients from the egg yolk, not the mother. I said it. That's why you have this word ovo. Not the mother, from the egg yolk. And then um, uh, also it also receives nutrients uh, from the albumin. That is the outside part, uh, the, that white part. When you eat the egg, that white part you eat is what you call the Albumin. So basically, that's what you need to answer uh, on that.